Hey guys, hope you guys have been doing well. Today I'm just kind of doing a quick little video. Just, it's been a while since I've been out I'm working with uh, the long lens. So today I'm just working on practicing my uh, focus, manual focus abilities. Um, it's always good to keep perfecting your craft. But hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and give this video a like, um, especially if you're interested in learning more about wildlife filmmaking. Um, this channel is completely designated to everything that there is to know about learning to become a wildlife filmmaker. So go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe to this channel. I've got a lot more content like this coming your way. Turn on that bell so you get notified of any of my upcoming videos as well. And this is my world now. My name is Alan Lacey, and I'm a wildlife filmmaker, cameraman, and producer. Adventure with me as I explore the amazing world of nature and show you what it's like filming the wild. Here comes the tricky part. I've been walking in this wash, keeping my eye out for hopefully any kind of sounds of any critters. Um, out here in the desert, there's been a lot of rain this season, this summer, and this monsoon season. So I'm hoping to find some activity, some wildlife. Um, it's been a while since I've been out with the long lens, so it's always kind of good to get out and practice and get um, just more experience with it. The more you can do, especially if it's been a while, getting the focus, dialing the stuff in, and just improving on your skills, it's important. So that's kind of today's mission. Um, I am gonna head up out of this wash. Since it is monsoon season, there are some storms in the area, and I don't wanna be in the wash in case some of the, uh, get some of that traditional heavy monsoon rains, bad place to be. So I'm gonna head up out of the wash a little bit, and then uh, just sort of sit down and see if I can't find any uh, any activity, any wildlife, so yeah, should be good.
All right. I think we'll kind of hang out here for a little while. I hear a flicker over there. A couple of them, actually. A lot of other birds, so. Don't have anything like a blind to sit in. It's kind of my downfall lately, but we'll just sort of hang out here for a while and see if anything happens to come our way. It's always important to get your tripod head leveled out. That way, whenever you have it set and ready, you'll be able to make really smooth pans and tilts that keep the horizon um, equal and level. Because that's a, you, the, last, the last thing you want to do is get back into your edit and see your horizon all skewed. So, apologize for the wind. These storms are starting to pick up a little bit. But yeah. Well, the waiting game begins. <laughs> I hear the flicker. It's actually coming from behind me, so. The question is where? All right, I hear him, he's just right over there. He's kind of low. I don't see him yet, but, oh, there he is. He is on top of that cactus. I don't think. I'm not in a good position to get him right now, though. spot at all. And now he's gone. Rats. Okay. Let's see if we can't figure out where this guy's at. It's starting to rain though. And yeah, the rain's starting to come in a little bit more. Gotta have to keep an eye on this rain because if it gets heavy, I'm kind of in an area where there's just a lot of washes and I just don't want to get stuck. So, right now it's just really, really light though. So yeah, one of the biggest things often in wildlife filmmaking is patience. I've talked about it a lot in the past, but it really requires a lot of patience and uh, determination to be able to wait out your subjects um, until they come. Now today I'm not really focusing on any specific species. I'm just kind of free, free for all. Whatever happens to come my way I'm going to work on because I'm, I'm actually um, more focused on getting my skills um, refined. Um, I've got a few shoots coming up that I want to um, get some more experience on the lens before I get out there. So that's kind of an important thing to do. It's just to get some more, um, you know, like if it's an airplane, stick time is kind of the same concept. That muscle memory, uh, especially for focus, for your smooth pans and tilts, be able to track it and follow your subject. Um, so the more you can practice that and the more you can do that, birds in flight are a fantastic thing to do that with. Um, some cameras have really awesome autofocus systems, including this one. However, if you can learn how to nail it manually, it's that much better. Um, it'll be that much more valuable on a production shoot because um, you may not always be using gear that can accommodate um, really good autofocus systems. 
and tracking. So being able to practice is good. Vulture coming in. There we go. And he's in frame now. Patience pays off. Be nice if he came down a little more towards the horizon. Because for now he's just silhouetted in the sky. It's kind of a gray wash. It's not bad, but. If he could just get a little lower, I think he's maybe get a little more perspective and scale. He's still quite a ways out there too, so. One thing that's always a kind of a fun thing to try to practice on is keeping your um, subject, if it's flying, let's say, um, right now he's flying away from me, so I'm keeping him center more or less, you know, just kind of finding a third of the frame to fill him in. But if he's flying from, let's say, left to right like he is now, I l try to lead him with as much space on the left side so he can fly into it. You don't really want to have him, let's say, flying left, but have him on the left side of your frame like this because it kind of doesn't let the viewer really see what's going on. You're always kind of catching up. But if you could keep him on the side of the frame that he's flying into, um, so here we go again, he's flying left. So I'm keeping him on the right third and centered. And that allows your eyes to be able to kind of follow and track with him a little easier. And when they're constantly changing directions, of course, you just got to keep pivoting your camera and let him and track him accordingly. And he's way the heck out there, so it's kind of pointless to film right now. It's just, I mean, it is practice in the, keeping him in the picture, in the frame. We'll let him go off frame. Sometimes what you can do too, that's kind of fun to add a little bit of interest is let your subject move off frame on its own accord. Um, and that allows you to pick up the, fic the picture a little bit later and allows the animal to actually move off a frame. Kind of like if you're um, filming somebody walking, you're gonna cut and show them moving across the landscape in various different shots. So having your subjects fly into frame, fly out of frame, um, or if they're land-based, move in and out of frame, is an, it's an important thing for your editor to be able to work with to be able to help and increase more um, useful shots for your edit. Just picked up the buzzard again in a different area. In a different area. So, I'm hoping he gets closer. Seems to be moving all the ways. Somewhat getting out of the way. Off frame. So far away. But he is making his way somewhat closer. Ever so surely. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to get him lower in the ground. There we go. Now we got some options to show the terrain. I guess it's only fitting if you're in a desert to show a desert animal like a vulture, right? Okay, he just went behind a saguaro. And now I'm trying to figure out which direction he has gone, because if he's getting close, I need to be able to be ready. And then 
he's gone again. <laughs> so today I'm out here in the desert uh, working on refining some of my skills as a cameraman. Um, it's always important to kind of just keep working on your craft, just keep polishing and just keep getting better and better. Um, it's been a while since I've actually pulled out the long lens and worked with it. So today I've just been out um, just refamiliarizing myself with the focus, um, doing everything manually, um, just so that way if I do have a shoot coming up, that I'm prepared and I'm ready to roll. So I've been looking for, for a lot of birds because it's always nice to be able to catch birds in flight um, because they're the, one of the hardest subjects to keep in focus if they move because they they're so quick. Um, but yeah, it's been raining today. We're under a flash flood watch, so good times. I've been keeping an eye on the weather and it looks like there's a system coming in from the south, so my time is probably limited right now. So um, I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer and see what else I might be able to come up with. But um, I don't want to get stuck out in all of this um, open wash country because I crossed like four washes to get out here. So not a not a good combination if it does downpour and we've got to deal with a running wash. So, man, I love it. It's gorgeous today. So it started raining a lot and I decided to bring all the stuff back to the truck. So that's why I'm standing here <laughs> instead of back out there in um, the desert. Well, I'm still in the desert, but you know, a ways out there. So anyways, um, decided to call the video now. Um, there's a lot more rain coming in from the south. There's like some sort of tropical depression or something that's moving up from Baja, California, dumping tons of moisture here into Arizona. So that's why we're under this flash flood watch. So I'm gonna head back home. Um, and then start looking at the footage, put this video together for you guys. And um, anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. Um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. I am really focusing on trying to help you guys learn how to become wildlife filmmakers yourselves, um, teach you everything I know, everything I've learned along the way, um, and hopefully it'll help you in your process of becoming a wildlife filmmaker. Um, more behind the scenes stuff, a lot of you know tips and tricks coming out soon so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss those videos when i do put them out anyways if you have an idea for a film that you'd like to see me put out go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below let me know what you would like me to do um, and i'll see what i can't make up happen so anyways it's time to go in get the gear the gear all dried off and um start editing this video for you guys so we'll catch you guys on the next episode of filming the wild Thank you.